Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I am Craig. Well, as you saw from the intro, we're going to review another solar generator. As you know, if you watch my channel, I am a sailor and sailors generally don't run their engine that often. So keeping your house bank battery charged usually requires solar panels, which we will talk about in a free 100 watt right here. Uh, somewhere to store your power, which is usually some sort of in the old school days, lead acid batteries. Now we've all moved, hopefully you've listened to me, all moved to lithium iron phosphate batteries. And then you need an inverter to change the DC power into AC power to run your everyday appliances. Well, a solar generator does almost all of that except for the solar panel part in one. It's got a MPPT controller in here, which you can put solar panels directly into this. It efficiently converts it into DC power to charge your premium EVE lithium iron phosphate battery bank in here. There's 1,248 watts in this. And then you need a efficient way to convert it from DC to AC. Uh, so that's a sine wave inverter is the most efficient way. And it has a 1200 watt inverter with a surge capacity of, let me just check this out here, 2400 watts. I couldn't remember what the max is. So what that means is if you plug in something that's more than the stated 1200 watts, it can handle up to 2400 watts for a short period of time. So that would be um, anything that's got a motor. A lot of things with a motor, when you first plug it in, once it's running, it doesn't take that much power to keep it moving, but that startup surge can shoot up much higher than its stated uh, watts to keep it going, if you know what I mean. So that surge capacity is important. Now, as I said, lithium iron phosphate batteries have that added benefit over, definitely over lead acid, and certainly over even lithium ion, is that they are not fire starters like some lithium ion batteries are, they don't catch on fire. The lifespan is the number one perk. Uh, a lithium ion phosphate battery like this has a 3,500 cycles to bring it down to 85% of its original capacity. 3,500 cycles, that is a crap ton. That's, and a cycle is from completely dead to completely full. So what that means is you could kill this thing to zero every single day for 3,500 days. That's what? 10 years, and you're not gonna do that every single day. So if you did it every second day, that would be 20 years. I think the plastic might start to fall apart before <laughs> the battery sells well. And again, that 3500 does not mean after that it's a lead weight, just a paper weight that doesn't have any usefulness. It should bring it down to about 85% of its stated capacity. So long and short, something like this will take in your solar efficiently, convert it into a DC power efficiency with the MPPT controller, store it, have many, 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 many years of cycles, and then convert it with a sine wave inverter to efficiently uh, change it into AC. So it's everything you need. And I put this thing through its paces over the last week, and um, wow, I'm impressed. Again, Afree, I'd never heard of the company, didn't know anything about them, didn't know if they had a good track record or a bad track record. I really tried to find things to pick on with this one. I could find one and only one thing. It's a pro and a con at the same time. Check out that screen. I've never seen a screen that big. I mean, most screens, even on my big Blue Eddy, are like that size. Look at the difference. Even on my big Blue Eddy, which is in the other room, my big, big one, uh, the screen's not much bigger than this. So uh, yeah, screen real estate on this one is fabulous. It's bright color display. It has everything you want to know. It can show you what the input is and what the output is at the same time. How many hours it's going to take to charge if it's got more input how many hours it's gonna to take to kill it if you've got more output. It shows you all the different symbols. It's not a touch screen, I'm wearing gloves today. It's not a touch screen, so it doesn't matter that I'm wearing gloves. Everything has its own button. So there's the DC button, there's the USB buttons, there's the light button. So again, when you turn things on, it shows up on the bottom of the screen what is turned on. Of course, to save battery power, you probably want to turn anything you're not using off again, but love the screen. Love it, best screen I've ever seen. And I like the buttons. I don't need the touch screen because my concern is if the touch screen stops working or you crack the screen or something, and now I don't know if you've ever cracked a cell phone. Once you do, then the touch screen doesn't really work right after that. So buttons just seem more foolproof. Less likelihood of them failing down the road. So what's the negative? I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead because I'll do the pros and cons at the end. But what's the only negative I could find? The screen doesn't turn off. I mean, it does turn off if I sit here long enough. It will turn off because I'm not doing anything. I'm not either charging it or decharging it by using it. So the screen will shut off after about, I think five minutes. But if you're charging it or using it in any way, there's no 
screen off, which is weird because most of the other um, solar generators I've ever had uh, reviewed have had the opposite problem. You turn on the screen and you start using it and you're curious about what's going on. You glance over and the screen's off. And you're like, what? I didn't turn it off. So you have to touch the button again to wake up the screen. It's constantly having to wake up the screen, assuming you want to know what's going on with how many watts you're using or how many watts you're bringing in from solar. Um, the only one I ever know that's had, what I would like to see is a button like this. This is my old NinjaBot, my very first solar generator. It has a button that says display. When you press it, it's on and it just stays on until you press it again and then it turns it off. That is what I wish a had done. Everything about this solar generator is top notch, except for this weird thing where they didn't create a button for the display. So a if you're watching, that is my only, only detractor to this. There's so many things I do like. Um, everything is kind of on its sides. So if you want to charge it with AC power uh, or from solar panel, it's on this thing and there's a little door, I don't, kind of a dust door, I guess. On this side, it is all your uh, AC plug outs. And then on top is a space to put your charging cable. Very nice, very nice. So everything, you can pack it all in here. Now that I've done that, it's gonna be hard to get it all back in. There you go. Once you pack it all in there, you can just grab this and go. And uh, you're on your way. You won't forget your charging cord if you leave it in the top. So let's just go through a few of the features. I've written them down so I don't miss any of them. As I said before, high high capacity sine wave inverter, 1200 watts, but 2400 watt surge capacity, a BMS battery management system. That goes without saying nowadays with the lithium iron phosphate batteries, even just general now lithium iron phosphate batteries like this one have a BMS built into it. But of course there's different categories of how quality BMS. This one's a high quality BMS designed for the capacity of this lithium iron phosphate battery. It's got all sorts of safety, UL standards, CE, FCC, all these other standards that it's, it's put before these boards to get approved. Something I hadn't mentioned is the four ways to charge. You can charge with AC, you can charge with solar panels, you can charge with DC from a cigarette adapter or whatever you want. You can charge in four different ways simultaneously and at the same time be using it, whether it's the AC plugs out or one of the DC uh, ports out. See, when you're first charging it, when it's near dead, you're getting about 700 watts, which means you can charge this thing, it says in two hours, from dead to full. And just so you know, there's 13 outputs, 13, you can simultaneously use. Of course, you've got all the DC ones, you've got two QC uh, USB-A, and then you have four USB-C. Some of them are 20 watts, you got 20 watt, 20 watt, 20 watt, and then the last one is 100 watts. So that would be something for like a, a MacBook Pro. Actually, this thing here, this MacBook Pro, it uses 100 watt in maximum. Obviously, if you give it less, it takes less. So you could plug it into the 20 watt. It'll just take longer to charge your laptop. But it's nice that they have one that's a 100 watt output. And here is a feature I didn't mention and is very unique. It is a UPS, which means an uninterrupted power source. So if you are working from home, you're a work from home person and you got a computer, if you're plugged into a regular wall outlet and the lightning, you see lightning storm outside and it flickers, even for a split second, your computer will reboot. Um, plug it in, plug your wall outlet into this. It bypasses this if the batteries are full, goes right to your computer, so your computer's plugged into this. If you have a power outage, it will instantly switch to this charging or powering your computer and you will not have that reboot because there's no loss in power milliseconds, short enough that the computer doesn't even realize the power went out for a split second and back again. So that is pretty unique. Not too many of my other uh, solar generators I've reviewed have actually been true UPS. So uh, this one is UPS and they show it in the owner's manual, which you will get, of course, um, the bypass circuitry. So it only sends some power to the battery if the battery needs it. It'll take whatever the wall outlet will give. It gives first priority to whatever you're using off of it, so your computer in this case, and whatever's residual leftover goes into the batteries to charge it, so you're simultaneously charging the batteries and uh, powering your computer in this case. If the power goes out, of course, you're already using the power, flicks over to the battery, boom, you're, you're golden. And another thing I've never seen before is a seven year warranty. I think you get five years, no matter what, and then when you register the product with A-Free, you get an additional two for seven years. 
I guess they really trust that their battery banks are going to last a long time. Like I said, that 3500 cycles is going to take you a long time to really get to the point where it's going to wear itself out. But uh, seven years, I've never seen a seven year warranty. Okay, I put this thing through its paces. I wanted to see how much of that 1248 watts could I get by uh, metering an AC out, which turned out to be 1031 watts before I killed the battery. And that works out to be, I think, I'll put it on the screen, 80, 3% or 86%, I'll put it on the screen. It was very impressive. I think anything over 80 is quite good. There's always some parasitic drain. When you're converting DC into AC, it's going through an inverter, there's always some loss there. And then there's that thing where the screen never shuts off, which is probably you drawing some power just to keep the screen on the whole time. Um, so you, I, you're never gonna get 100% of its rated capacity. Again, anything over 80% is quite good. Then I put it through a DC test where I put it on, uh, I have one of these. Shit. Hopefully I didn't break that. Shit, bent all the fins. Yikes. Um, yeah, I put it on this static amp tester. You decide how many amps you want at how many volts that are coming out of this. And it is coming out at uh, obviously well over 12 volts because it's lithium iron phosphate. And so I was running it at about 120 watts. And again, it took like nine hours to kill this thing at 120 watts. Um, it got around a thousand uh, watt hours. So a little less than AC, which surprised me. But I think what it is, is the parasitic drain. The fact it takes nine or 10 hours to kill this thing at 120 watts means that this thing is on and running its internal diagnostics and its DC out and all that stuff for nine or 10 hours which again, with the screen on, is causing some parasitic drain and therefore it didn't get as high as it did with the AC. But I think with the AC, I was able to plug in some higher draw things. I was charging my Blue Eddy off this at 400 watts. I was doing other things that were higher draws. So it was quicker to kill it down to zero, but therefore the parasitic drain of it just being on and doing stuff was less as well. So a little bit of a surprise to me, it actually got a higher rating on AC out than it did on DC out. But I think both of the rated numbers were quite good. Well, at least the AC one was quite, quite good. And the DC one, a little bit less, but I think it's still around 80%. So therefore I give it two thumbs up in terms of its rated capacity to compared to what it actually is giving out. And the last thing I wanted to mention is, ah, when you get this thing, you get a nice little canvas zippered bag which comes with a bunch of different cords. Of course, the cords that you would need to plug it into your solar panel with the MC4 connectors. And then you also have a cigarette adapter for your car to plug it in and charge it while you're on your way to your campsite or whatever. That's always a nice feature. Not every solar generator does that, gives you the car one. Sometimes you go on their website and this is an extra feature. You want a cigarette adapter? You gotta pay 30 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it is. Another thing I wanted to mention, not only on this, but on the solar panel, I'm gonna show you in a second. The quality of the cords, the thickness of the cords, were quite impressive. Every time I got a cord, oh, and the power cord, which is now not in this, but up here, hiding in this little compartment, that thing is thick, thick. I've never seen a power cord this thick before. So um, yeah, I give Avery top points for quality of cords. And I want to talk about the cord in the solar panel too. Let me just move this over to the side. So this is their 100 watt. They also have a 200 watt. And I was very impressed with the quality. The uh, nice canvas covers on everything, a nice zippered kind of sewn on bag, un unlike this bag that's separate. This one is obviously sewn right onto the back. And what I wanted to mention is the thickness of this cord again. Well, there's a solar. They give you this and I'm not sure why. Ah, oh, don't fall. They give you this and I'm not sure why. It's an Anderson port, I believe is what they call it. And I'm not even sure why I got this because I don't think there's an Anderson port on this. But maybe they're just trying to be helpful. For those people who have a different model, maybe some of the smaller a ones have this Anderson port. So because of that, when they're selling their solar panels, they're giving you this because they don't know which solar generator you might end up having. Anyways, it's there if you need it. But the one I use, of course, is the uh, regular old MC4 to that other cord I showed you, the MC4 that goes in. But I wanted to show you this because if you've watched my other reviews of solar panels, I'm amazed how many solar panels give you a rinky-dinky tiny little cord as if you're gonna have your solar panel right beside your solar generator. This is all twisted. Anyways, this is 12 feet long. 12 feet! 
on a very inexpensive 100 watt folding solar panel. And you might notice it's very, very small. Let me just pull up. This is 100 watts. This is the Blue Eddy 200 watt. The weight difference is crazy. The size difference is also kind of crazy, but yeah, it's 100 watt versus 200 watts. So it's not a fair apples to apples comparison, but the weight of the Blue Eddy is massive. I would never take that on a, on a camping hiking trip, but this one, I swear this thing, I think it's read it weighs 5.5 pounds. Very light, extremely light. Another thing that's built into this solar panel is it comes with a little controller here that actually has you, two USB A's, a USB C, and I think a 5.5 millimeter barrel port out. So if you have something like a phone or a tablet or something, and you just want to charge it directly from this solar panel without even using a solar generator, you can. Now I set this up in my backyard. Let me just show you. It's a little easier to show you here. It comes with these little elasticated legs that stick out. It's a three panel instead of a two panel. I have another 100 watt from AimTom that's actually just two panels folded in half. So this is three. So because it's three, it folds down a little smaller than my AimTom is. But uh, yeah, I was really, really happy with the quality of this. And again, that cord is gymungous for a 100 watt uh, panel. So when I tested it outside on today, it was just happened to be a beautiful blue sky. So it was, I think it was very comparable to the best conditions you can get. And I was getting about 84, 84 watts. So let me just talk about some of the features of this. So the stats here are for the 100 watt, it's about 5.5 pounds. If you got the 200 watt, which of course would be bigger, I looked at that, it's 4.5 kilograms, which is about nine pounds, nine, 10 pounds. Um, 36 month warranty, which is pretty damn good. 99% translucence or clarity. So 99% of the stuff gets through the protective coating. There is a protective coating on all of these solar panels to stop it aging and fogging and all that. And so that coating, sometimes the coating is, is kind of taking away the translucency of how much power sun can get through to the actual cell beneath it. But this one says it's 99% translucent. The energy conversion rate is 23%. That's pretty good. Some of the cheaper, and I'm not saying this is cheaper, some of the cheaper solar panels you can buy on Amazon or whatnot, if you read the specs, it's around 19% efficient. 23 is at the absolute top end. I have never seen a folding solar panel, and I've reviewed a bunch of them so far, that was above 23%. So if that is the case, 23% is damn impressive. Again, this is not a very expensive solar uh, panel. I'll put the prices on the screen for Canadian and American. You know what? I just wanted to say this. I went to the Canadian uh, AFRI site because I'm Canadian and this is selling for $999 Canadian. I was like, that is damn good. I went to the American site expecting it to be $699 because the exchange rate between Canada and the United States it was actually $1,099 on the US site. I'm like, it's more expensive on the US site? Okay, that's never happened before. So if you're a Canadian, go on the Canadian site. If they're still $999, buy it. I'll put the links down below because that is one hell of a deal. And clearly if Canada's paying less than Americans, even with our own money having a weaker purchasing power, then that's really good. I'm thinking A3 must have made a mistake. <laughs> uh, limited time deal. Anyways, go check it out. Oh yeah, last thing to mention on this is it's IP65 rated. So it's a waterproof thing. So if you leave it in your backyard and it starts to rain, not a big deal. It'll be fine. IP65 means this thing can sit in the rain. Now it is made of a kind of a canvasy material. So this isn't the type of solar panel you would just leave in your backyard every day, rain or shine, because as much as the actual panel might not really care about getting wet, this canvas thing I'm imagining would absorb some water. It probably has some coating on it to stop water from getting in it. But let's face it, day after day getting abused by the sun and the rain, it's probably gonna really limit the lifespan of this solar panel. So I've always said this in my other reviews of folding solar panels. They're meant to be a panel you whip out when you need power. Let's say you're an RVer or a camper. You, you know, If you're an RVer and you have a set site you go to all the time, you leave your camper there pff, all summer, you wouldn't leave this unattended, just fold it up, you know, fold it out beside your RV and go take off for the weekend and leave it there, right? You're gonna fold it up, you're gonna put it away. You're only gonna take it out when you see the forecast is for sun. 
there's no point in unfolding it, leaving it there if the forecast is for rain. <laughs> now glass panels, those ones, like I have two in my backyard, those glass panels are weatherproof to the nth degree. There's no material on it. So of course you can just leave those out there mounted somewhere in your backyard or beside your RV and set it and forget it. These are meant to be only pull them out when you need the power. So again, why would you leave it out if it's gonna rain? It just makes no sense. And again, with the solar panel, you get the Anderson connector, which again, I don't have anything that uses an Anderson connector. I'm pretty sure that's what they call it, an Anderson connector. Yes, it does say Anderson cable. It's there. Yeah, there's, there are some other brands of solar generators that do use an Anderson connector. So I'm assuming A4E has some that use that and other brands have some that use that. So they're just being nice guys, giving you a cable that you may or may not need. I personally don't. One last thing I kind of glossed over is, of course, there's the regulated 12 volt cigarette adapter on this. But I wanted to mention too, this is a 10 amp max current coming out of this cigarette adapter. That's standard. This is a 25 amp and it's an XT60. It's an XT60, which is kind of funny that they didn't make it an XT90 because the solar in on the side over here is an XT90. <laughs> so just to have everything be the same. Um, I'm surprised they didn't make this an XT90 for power going in from solar and this be an XT90 for DC going out, but it is what it is. Um, I guess it's more common for things that use DC to have an XT60, so there you go. Nice little um, rubber flaps that actually have these little, these little teeth that you have to push to kind of get them to lock in. So they're not just hanging, flopping over top. They are actually really secure once you close them. I guess, let's get to the pros and cons. There's no pros or cons, well, there's no cons to the solar panel. It's inexpensive, it does the job, gets about 84, 85 watts out of 100, which is pretty common. You're not gonna get 100% of what the rated capacity is unless it's absolutely crystal clear. It was a blue sky today, but there has been some Northern Canadian forest fires and that haze is coming down. So even though it looks like a blue sky, there's always a little bit of haze that's kind of taking away some of the sun's capability. So I'm happy with 85%. But for the pros and cons of the solar generator, again, very few cons, lots of pros. Did really well on all my tests. Seems well built, has a lot of nice features like storage compartments and whatnot. Few nitpicky things. Um, there's no app. Not that it needs to be this, again, nitpicky. Things like the Blue Eddies, they come with an app that you can pull up on your phone, how much solar am I bringing in, how much power am I using through the things I've plugged into it. It's just a nice thing to have so you don't have to come over and wake your screen up or do whatever you to see what you're doing. You just look at your phone and you know what things are doing. That would be a nice feature. So if, if you're watching, maybe create an app. Um, you'd have to add a blue chip, a Bluetooth chip in here, I guess, so that you can talk to your phone. These are small, small things you could add that would just add that extra panache, that extra feature. These doors on the side, I think there's likelihood they're gonna get broken off. I, I thought, is there a way I can un, un, unpop this so that it's gone? And the reason I had this one time is on the AC out here, I had something that needed to go down. It was actually my AC metering device. It's bigger than this space. And I had to put it uh, on here with this hanging off the edge of the table because it was so big that I couldn't put it in the lower one without hanging it off the, the table and I couldn't put it in the higher one because this door was in the way. I tried to wiggle it to see if this door could pop off without breaking it. I couldn't find a way. My thought is that you're gonna plug something in that's gonna pull up on this door and it is just plastic and it's gonna snap the hinges off. So I would have preferred like these rubber doors on the front that if you're gonna do a dust cover on here, you just do a rubber door uh, that, you know, that just comes down and you kind of push it in like you do with these and it, and it blocks the dust and the rain from getting, I'm sure that's why it's there to make this IP rated so that if you accidentally leave this out beside your tent when you're camping and you go for a little hiking trip and it rains un unexpectedly as summers, summer rains often happen, then these doors being down means less likelihood that rain is getting in there and that's probably why they did it. I just think they'd made, wish they'd made it a rubber door instead of a plastic door because I think plastic over time will break. Um, and then my last nitpicky feature again is the only time this thing ever shuts off is when you aren't using it for five minutes. Otherwise, this big beautiful screen is going to stay on if you're either using any of the DC outs or have it plugged into any sort of solar or power in 
then the screen just stays on forever. The reason, you might go, who cares, Craig? How much really, it's LED, how much could this really waste? Let me click that down. Um, it's not that the power is such a big draw. I mean, I don't know, maybe it is. It doesn't show you how many watts are being used by the screen. It only shows you how many watts are going out through one of these ports. What I had, prime example, I took this to my boat last weekend. Finally got my boat working. I've had a transmission issue from hell that went on for six weeks. My boat was with a mechanic. Um, finally got it fixed. Anyways, I brought it last weekend for a trip up the St. Lawrence to my home port from where the mechanic is. And uh, we had this in the main salon and we had my wife's dad, Larry was on board. So we gave him the V-berth up front to sleep. And my wife seems to not mind sleeping on the couch in the settee, which is the main cabin area. She was sleeping there. This was on the floor under the kitchen table, plugged into a additional kind of like, well, that's a Bouge RV 12 volt fridge. Unfortunately, when this is plugged in, a Bouge RV fridge was plugged into this, you know, this cigarette adapter, the screen was on. And I thought after five minutes, it might just shut off. So she was laying there and I said, I think the screen will just shut off after a certain amount of time. And this thing's bright. There's nowhere that I can see to dim it either. Then again, there's no app where you can go in and say, please dim the screen. This thing was on. And then after a little while, we realized this thing is not gonna shut off. <laughs> and it's like a small TV set, bright lights at night, flashing her right in the eyes. So it was one of those things where she's like, can we turn that screen off? And I'm like, ah, I can't, can't find a button for it. I went to the owner's manual, couldn't find anything about how to turn the screen off. I emailed the, uh, my contact with Afery and said, am I missing something? How do you turn the screen off if you don't wanna see it? And she said, oh, it turns off after five minutes if you don't use it. <laughs> and I'm like, but if I use it, how do I get the screen to turn off? And she's like, oh, no, it doesn't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. So nitpicky again, it might not even bother you if you're putting this somewhere that you don't care if the screen is on when you're using it. Yeah, if you're trying to sleep beside it, it's gonna bother you. So just would be nice to have the option to press a button and have it off. So there you go. I give this one two thumbs up. Very happy with the quality of this especially considering I've never heard of the company. Now, maybe that's just me. Oops, microphone, sorry. Maybe that's just me. Um, maybe I'm just not well-versed in every solar, gener solar generator manufacturer out there, but I'm really glad they reached out to me because I can now say I've never seen a nicer screen than this one. Now, Afri has a bigger model, a 2000 watt model, but I saw reviews on it because I was hoping to get the 2000 watt model. They said they were out of stock, so they sent me this 1200 watt model. But then I saw the reviews of the 2000 after seeing what I got, and I'm like, I think I like this one better. I love this screen. The 2000 watt, maybe it's an older design, has the smaller screen, like I was telling you before with like the blue eddies and stuff where it's a small screen. Maybe it has similar amount of data on it, but everything's so much smaller and less brightest. I saw one of the reviewers was using it outside and his wife was commenting, it's not very bright, is it? No, it's hard to see the screen. This thing is so bright that even when you're outside, you can see it. So pros and cons out of the way, all pros, few nitpicky little cons, things that Afri could easily improve. Again, plastic doors, not a big deal. Maybe create an app just for niceness, just have people be able to look at what's going on on their phone. And also too, when you have an app, you can shut it off. If you realize you left it on, now granted, I guess if this one's not being used, it turns itself off. But if you are using it <clears throat> to plug laptops and other things in, and then you go to bed and realize, oh, my solar generator is pretty low or whatever reason, I want to shut it off. You can shut it off from the comfort of your bed by using the app on your phone. That seems to be the going thing with EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, all these bigger brands as they've all created an app so that they can, you can control your solar generator remotely, which is nice. And also review what's going on on the screen without actually walking over and looking at the screen. So there you go. Well, if you found this review of the Afri 1200 watt solar generator and the 100 watt solar panel, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. It helps grow the channel because if you give it a thumbs up, it, uh, YouTube gives it out to more people to look at because they think, hey, if you liked it, maybe somebody else will like it. So that helps the channel grow and helps producers of these sort of things send me more products to review for you because they see the likes and they see the views. So I'd much appreciate it if you do that. Until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.